Hi, this is Ascolta by Jolin Lab, and I'm using it right now to bring up the levels of my voice, and it's being recorded through this system. So I've hooked up a stereo field recorder to the top input of Ascolta, which receives, uh, which accepts, I should say, uh, stereo mini jack cables, which is awesome. And it's not something that I've used before in Eurorack, but it's really cool to bring in stereo signals. Um, so what Ascolta is doing is it brings up the levels uh, of any line level or passive instrument to the Eurorack level, which is, as you probably know, a lot, a lot uh, louder, a lot hotter. And this means uh, that I can do all kinds of things to whatever I send in there and that can be a synthesizer uh, or a radio, anything with a headphone output or a piezo uh, horror box thingy, uh, you name it. And well, you can hook up two cables because it has uh, two inputs and two outputs, but you can just use one uh, cable going into the input and then you can get two signals out of it. I will uh, demonstrate uh, what you can do with Ascolti because it has uh, envelope outputs and uh, peak outputs as well. But I just want to play around a little bit with this setup first so you can get a grasp of the possibilities that this kind of module brings to your setup. So first of all I just want to use the envelope output which is kind of analyzing the level of my voice. Um, and I want to use this kind of as uh, a modulator for doing compression. Well, I just use the envelope output and I need to... Well, whenever the envelope goes up, whenever my voice is louder, I need to bring down the levels. So I need to invert the envelope and offset it. And this is something that uh, Nobby can do for me when you switch this switch to the bottom position and you invert uh, the output and then you should be able to hear when I connect it to the VCA of Tutto e Sempre that whenever I talk louder louder I should turn this up a little bit so you can hear when I talk louder 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 that it compresses the sound a little bit. Now, of course, you need to uh, spend a lot more time uh, setting this up if you really, really need it to work properly, but well, you can see that as a proof of concept, this works. I also want to show you, well, let you listen to how it sounds when I run my sound or my, my voice, I should say. So Tuto it simply makes it very easy to just quickly connect several uh, processors or, modu or modulators to your signal. So there we go. And now you should be able to hear. Let's bring it a little bit here. Now you should be able to hear that I can add subtle frequency shifting to my voice. This gives it kind of a swampy character. Of course you can go completely haywire with a flat slide like this and turn yourself into some kind of weird uh, robot munchkin. But usually I use uh, this frequency shifter and I'm using Kosalin IKL device on subtle settings to create kind of like a chorus effect without it being a chorus. So that's Cool. You can go down as well, which I always forget about. No, I should. So this is just going down. <laughs> well, that's really cool, isn't it? So now instead of doing uh, stereo frequency shifting, I want to do stereo ring modulation. So just, oh, this is loud. So just in case you want to turn yourself into some kind of uh, Dalek, 
for the Doctor No fans. You can do so. By using ring modulation. And you can hear how this really affects the stereo signal in an interesting way. Now if I uh, switch around or invert the modulator from one of these sides, you get kind of So yeah, there you go. This is just a few things that you can do with a uh, module like a small cloud that brings up any kind of level uh, to your standards. You can even adjust the setting on the small cloud. So the second stage is in the series, and the first stage in this case. Ridiculous amounts of amplification. And I'll show you an example. Thanks a lot to Fidel Film from Tony and for sending me this and for a few other modules and commissioning the video on them. These modules turned out to be really And well, while none of them actually produce sound, a uh, module like a Skolta is, well, tremendously fun just because you can bring in all kinds of sounds. You can hook up your phone to your system or just a field recorder like I'm doing now. As a microphone, you can hook up your guitar and whatnot. So I'll just stop playing around with this uh, ring modulator stuff. Let's have a closer look at the features of a sculptor, which will take up a lot of your time and then we'll head over to some hopefully nice sound and matching sounds. Hi, I'm oh, Silver. Away. Let's have a quick look at the features of Ascolta. Even though Ascolta is a surprisingly versatile unit, it's probably unsurprising that there's not a lot of uh, features to talk about, as Ascolta is, well, just a preamp with a built-in envelope follower and peak detector circuit. And there's two halves in Ascolta. The first jack here is an input, so you connect something in here. And then you get the amplified output here. The other side is, well, exactly the same thing. It's just labeled input 2 and output 2 here. Both sides of Ascolta have 40 dB of gain of amplification, that's 100 times amplification, which sounds like a lot, and that's, well, because it is a lot. You can use these two parts completely independent if you connect two separate signals here. And then I mean really just connecting a mono jack cable into the first input and connecting something else to the second input. If you then tap a signal out of the outputs, you'll be able to amplify them separately and use them separately for whatever you want. The top input of Ascolta also accepts uh, stereo uh, mini jack cables. I dug up a really old one I think this cable might be, I don't know, 20 years old. And this is another testament that they used to make things a lot sturdier than nowadays. Anyway, let me bring down the level because that's what these knobs are for. And let's connect uh, this signal here. Now, when I bring up this knob here, which controls the amplification, you can see that for this particular source, when I turn it completely to the right here, you can see these detectors. Uh, well, you can see the LEDs for these detectors light up. 
because I connected a stereo signal with a stereo cable here, you can actually extract the stereo signal from this. So the left side would come out of the first output and the right side of the signal would come out of the right output. But as you can probably see from the LEDs that are flashing here, and here they are not, the amplification setting for both of these channels, even though they come into Ascolta at the same place, the settings for these two sides is independent. So you need to set them to the same amount of amplification if you really want to keep your stereo image intact. There's a jumper on the back of Ascolta that lets you choose how this uh, second channel behaves. So there's the setting where uh, you can connect a stereo mini jack cable to the first input and the signals are just split between the top and the bottom halves of Ascolta, so between the first and the second channel of Ascolta. But you can also set this jumper so that the second channel is in series with the first channel, which gives us an amplification of 80 dB, and that's, well, 100 times 100, so 10,000 times amplification, which is completely ridiculous. Even with a single channel, you can bring up the noise level of your system, and I mean the noise level that is inherent uh, and caused by your power supply and whatnot. So when you set the jumper to chain these two uh, channels, the noise levels will become quite ridiculous. And it's stated in the manual that you can use Ascolta as kind of a bit sniffer or EMF detector. Just because, well, if you have a 10,000 factor amplification, it becomes astronomically sensitive. So if you really want to build that seismic detector with a piezos to detect Mars quakes from uh, the comfort of your living room, I'm sure Ascolta will be of much help. All jokes aside, let's connect this stereo signal to the mixer. And I'm still using Tuto e Sempre. The signal that I'm sending in is just uh, coming from a portable radio and I've set this to be in between radio stations to avoid uh, copyright situations. Now the volume is really really low on the radio itself so let's bring it up a little bit. You might be able to see that the LEDs uh, are now lighting up on both channels. By the way, if you connect a mono signal to this, the two channels are not normalized. This only works when you're sending in a stereo signal with a stereo mini jack. What I also want to mention is that it's not strictly necessary to connect outside sources to um, Ascolta. And to demonstrate this, I'll just send an output of rings into the first uh, input here. So I can remove the cables for the second channel. Of course, this is... Uh, Clipping something along the line, but which can be something that you are after, well, which sounds extremely nice, if you ask me. But let's turn down the level here. So by turning down the amplification, you can get a clean signal even from Eurorack sources. And I mean, you can use this just as an attenuator as well, if you're really in a pinch.
but I don't think it takes DC signals. So I'm turning this up right to the point to where I can see the LEDs um, reacting nicely. And let's move down to my bigger scope so I can show you what these are actually sending out. As the name suggests, the envelope output, which is the one to the left, sends out an envelope. It's an envelope follower, which has some slew to it, so it's a little bit slow. But the peak output here reacts really quick. And in most use cases, this uh, ended up being a lot louder, a lot hotter signal that I could easily use as a trigger source for uh, envelope generators, drum modules, or even as a clock source for sequencers. Right now, the only thing that is connected to the scope is the actual audio signal. Let me bring it up in volume a little bit. And let's have a look at the signal from the envelope output. I thought overlapping these would be a good idea, but well, let's just move this one down. So the blue trace is the audio, which is currently just rings going through Ascolta. We're monitoring the output of Ascolta. The red trace is the signal from the envelope output on Ascolta. And let's connect uh, the peak output so we can see it on the scope as well. And you can immediately see, in fact, let me bring it down even more. You can immediately see that like I said, the peak output usually is a much hotter signal. These are 10 volt peaks here. And if you need a signal like this to trigger a really sensitive module or sequencer, it's best to send the peak output through another envelope follower just to smooth out the tail a little bit because otherwise you you could end up with a situation uh, that your sequencer is getting triggered every time the signal drops a little bit which is usually not what you want. Let's bring up the amplification on Ascolta a little bit so you can see its influence on the envelope and peak outputs. So right now the amplification of the first channel is about halfway. shorten those tails but you can see that now the peak output still the green trace gives us a signal that's a lot cleaner the amount of slew in the envelope follower makes it so that well the envelope does not have the time to reach any higher. So let's bring up that tail again. And well, let's just for the sake of it I haven't tried this before, so this might sound like uh, absolute shit. 
let's just use this red trace, the envelope output, to modulate a parameter on rings. Let's modulate the structure. And let's use the peak output to modulate another parameter, let's say some FM. Let's bring down the amplification a bit, so the peak output actually drops sometimes. I like how we're getting this subtle saturation, just making sure I'm not clipping my mix, but it doesn't seem to be. And since Rings' outputs can be used in stereo, you could do this kind of thing in stereo, which is something that I'll leave up to you to explore. And I think that's about all I can tell you about Ascolta. So let's listen to a few patches that I made using Ascolta to bring in outside sources so I can use all my Eurorack goodies here to process them and be warned some of my sound examples might be a little bit cringy but I guess you'll either have to endure or skip ahead If there's any questions, please leave them in the comment box. I try to reply to them as soon as I see them. I hope you enjoy my batch shenanigans.
Not only can you bring this kind of recording that you uploaded on your phone into your rack by using the envelope and peak outputs of Ascolta, you can use this to trigger a whole patch. Ik ben allemaal begonnen toen ik de eerste keer filmpjes bekeek van in zo van die uh, Chinese. Jacob, broeder Jacob, slaat je Jacob, slaat je nog, slaat je nog. Maar toen ik op Saint Lucas zat, was er mee. Slaap jij nog? Slaap jij nog? Voor de klokken luiden, voor de klokken. Ik probeer nog het tuin gewoon door te zijn en dat te tonen dat het kan. En ik was niet verliefd op dat meisje, maar op die andere manier vond ik het belangrijk dat ze, dat ze cool vond wat ik deed, want ik vond haar cool. Is dat wat er? Mijn gezicht staat er toch niet op, hè, want ik wil niet dat ze mij herkennen. Well, I did warn you that it would get a little bit cringy, but I'm sure you weren't prepared for this kind of cringiness. Let's uh, watch another few 
regular sound examples.